My name is Dr. Chance Kaplan, and I'm a plastic surgeon here at Lancaster General Hospital. Today I'm going to talk about breast reconstruction. My partners and I, we have six plastic surgeons here at Lancaster General Hospital, and all of us do breast reconstruction, although some of us specialize in certain areas. There are two major forms of breast reconstruction. One is tissue-based breast reconstruction, and I'll go into more detail about each one of these in a little bit. And the other one is implant-based ba breast reconstruction. There is one guy in our group, that, Dr. John Bass, that does tissue-based reconstruction, and the rest of us do implant-based reconstruction. They're a very specialized area, and that's why we kind of divide it up that way. Um, my background is I've been doing plastic surgery for 30 years. I originally have practiced down in Florida for 27 years and recently moved up here because of family reasons to Lancaster General Hospital. So let's talk a little bit about the two major forms. The first one is tissue-based reconstruction, which I don't do, as I said. Dr. John Bass does that. He specializes in that area. Um, and this is where you take a portion of your, your own skin and your own body and move it from, say, your abdomen and reconstruct the breast that way after mastectomy. The other major form, which all the rest of the five plastic surgeons do, is implant-based reconstruction. This is where we take either an implant or a tissue expander, which is an expandable implant, and we place it in the breast after mastectomy. Women can choose nowadays to have the affected side, breast cancer removed, and just do the reconstruction on one side, that's called unilateral reconstruction and unilateral mastectomy, versus bilateral mastectomy, which is taking both breasts, one for cancer and one prophylactically, that's to prevent cancer from coming on the other side, or some women do have cancer on both sides. So they take both breasts and we do bilateral tissue expanders or implant-based. There's a trend now to do direct to implant reconstruction where the mastectomy is done, and then instead of putting a tissue expander in, um, which is an adjustable implant, they we go directly to implant, okay? This saves the patient several stay steps in reconstruction. However, it's not perfect, and 70, and depending on what you read, 70 to 80% of those patients need a second procedure, quote, what we call a tailoring procedure. And this is to just to make the breast look more symmetrical or get more fullness in some area. And that may be either chain exchange of an implant or fat injections, fat transfer from whatever the body to the breast to make it look better or more fuller or less full on one side versus the other. So let's go through the different stages of implant-based reconstruction. So the first event or surgery is the mastectomy. And like I said, a lot of women who have unilateral or one-sided breast cancer are opting to do both just because they want to reduce their risk in the future of getting breast cancer on the other side or what we call the contralateral side. So this is an option and insurance pays for both sides um, to do. So th the breast cancer surgeon does the mastectomies. Once they're finished with their mastectomies, then I start my procedure. We lift up the muscle and place the implant underneath the muscle, okay? So it could be an implant or it could be an adjustable implant, what we call a tissue expander. The advantage of using a tissue expander versus direct to implant is, one, you can adjust the size afterwards. And I've found that many women, although they say one thing preoperatively, when they get the implants in or the tissue expanders and then we start filling afterwards, and I'll go through those stages, they often want a little bit more than what they had or a little bit more fullness up top um, than what they had previously. 
um, prior to surgery or prior to getting the diagnosis of breast cancer. So we put the tissue expander in, we partially fill it, and the reason for that is that, and some of the reasons why we don't go direct to implant on some patients is that when the <clears throat> oncologic surgeon or the breast cancer surgeon does their procedure, they go right underneath the surface of the skin and traumatize the heck out of the blood supply to the skin. So if we put a full-size implant in after that, it would diminish blood flow and may inhibit healing. So what we do is put a tissue expander in and partially fill it so as not to tent up the skin and put pressure on that blood supply. We allow it to heal for four to five weeks afterwards. And then we come back and the tissue expander has a valve integrated into the implant that is under your skin. Now after a mastectomy, you don't have much feeling because all the nerves that course through the breast are cut because the breast is completely removed. So there's a decreased sensation. So when we do the filling of the tissue expander, and we do usually do it a little bit each week until the patient gets to the desired size, and you'll be able to adjust that if you need to. Um, so we fill a little bit each week. We put a needle through the skin. Again, it doesn't hurt because of no sensation and we fill a little bit, the patient goes home for a week, comes back and says, this is the perfect size, or maybe a little bit more. So we fill once again, and then the subsequent week, the patient would come back and say, well, this is good. Whether it's one side or both sides, we do the same on, on both sides if it's bilateral as far as the filling is concerned. So once we get to that desired fill and desired size or volume, um, we wait two weeks for the skin to stretch out, and then we go back. Another surgery, however, it is general anesthesia. If the first surgery is a large operation, this is a minor procedure. We make a small incision, about an inch long, through the old scar where the mastectomy was done. We take the tissue expander out, and we put the implant in. On the scale of one to 10, pain is about a one or a two and you're pretty much back to normal the following day. So then once the permanent implant is placed after the tissue expander is removed, we wait several more weeks for everything to heal, the incision to heal, and then we can come back. Now this is a purely elective cosmetic procedure, is to build a nipple mound, and we do that by using the skin, a series of flaps right where the nipple's going to be of your own skin, and we lift it up and fold it on itself, and that becomes the nipple mound. Uh, and then once that heals, in four to six weeks, we come back and we can tattoo the areola and the nipple areola complex. So it sounds like a lot. Four procedures, the mastectomy with the tissue expander placement, the exchange of the tissue expander for implant, again, you're back to normal the following day, the nipple mound, minor procedure, back to normal the following day, and then the nipple tattoo, which can be done under local in the office or general anesthesia if you so desire. So four procedures, the first one is the major one, the last three are back to normal the following day after the anesthesia wears off. And that's implant-based reconstruction. As we talked about before, there's a trend across the nation to do direct implant reconstruction which would avoid the exchange of the tissue expander for implant. Um, however, still need the nipple mound and the nipple tattoo in the end, which would be another procedure usually under general anesthesia, although the nipple can be done under local, or the areola tattoo can be done under local. That's to avoid a, a second procedure. So instead of four proce separate procedures, you would get three separate procedures. Now, the problem with going direct to implant, as I said before, is that a lot of women are unsure about their size, and they change after they see the direct to implant. They say, well, maybe I should have gone a little bit bigger. The tissue expander allows you to change that size subsequently, and if you do want to change your size after direct to implant reconstruction, you would need another surgery. 
So a lot of people have moved away from that, myself included, because of my experience of almost 30 years now. I see that more patients change their mind afterwards and that with a tissue expander, we have that availability and option to change the size in midstream per se. And so that's tissue-based versus implant-based reconstruction. Now tissue-based reconstruction I won't talk much about because I'm not an expert in that area. However, my partner John Bast is. Uh, but all the rest of the uh, plastic surgeons here at LGH, all six of us, all do implant-based reconstruction. And then Dr. Bast does tissue-based reconstruction. And that's breast reconstruction in a nutshell. Um, if you would like to contact us, usually the breast cancer surgeon contacts us regarding a consultation after you have a diagnosis of breast cancer and see them and they talk to you about possibility of breast reconstruction. Now not all, candidate, not all patients who have breast cancer are candidates for immediate reconstruction. Um, some have delayed reconstruction because of different types of cancer and different modalities that are either chemotherapy or radiation therapy before the surgery or after the surgery may um, change the course of action as far as the plastic surgeons are concerned in the way we approach breast reconstruction. We here at Penn Medicine Lancaster General Hospital are here to help you, uh, help the community, and thank you for your time. <music>